Hi everybody, welcome to the first section in Calculus 1. The idea of limits. Just go over the first basic example. Uh, so we have a rock that is thrown vertically. So go straight up. Uh, the height is a function of t. The height is given by s as a function of t. And that is the height. And the function of t is is that function. So uh, if we plot it, uh, it will look like this. So here, the y-axis or the vertical axis is the position of the rock. And the horizontal axis is time uh, in second. Now this example, we're interested in the average velocity. So uh, the most fundamental about the uh, speed or velocity, the speed is the distance over time. So the change in the distance or the change in position over the change in time. Right now we focus more about uh, the idea of limit. So we just briefly go to this. Right. So uh, the height or uh, the function, this is a quadratic function. The graph is a parabola with negative uh, leading coefficient, so it opens down, so it looks like this. Uh, so if we want to find the average velocity, this is exactly as the slope of the second line. So have this little graph here. Let's just review what we have in high school. Let's say we have two points x1 and y1 and then x2 and y2 if we draw a line connecting them the slope is given by the change in y over the change in x that x1 right. so that is exactly what we have now the y is in this case is the function of t. Uh, so we write uh, s of t1 minus s of t0 over t1 minus t0. Uh, so pretty much what we go from is we go from t0 to t1. So this is the change in t and this is the change in position. And we take the ratio of that, we have the slope. And that slope of the second line is the same as the average velocity. So that is exactly what we have here. Uh, average velocity uh, v bar is equal to the slope of the second line and given by that function. Right. Uh, the focus here is not the average velocity or the slope. The focus here is the idea of limit. So now what we do is uh, let's say we have we fix one of those points. Let's say we fix this t naught. Let that be one. So this point fix. And we let the other point T1, say original here, and we move closer and closer to the fixed point there. Right? So we fix all of the T naught. So T naught equal to one. Uh, that one is fixed. So we're not going to change the values of T0. Uh, T1, uh, we move to 1.5, 1.1. So we actually move the T1 closer and closer to T0. So when we do that, uh, we will find the slope. We change and approach in to this number. On the graph, originally, originally we start with the slope, go to the point t equal to 1, t equal to 2, and then that just give approaching to where the point get closer together. Essentially, the second line become the tangent line. So if we have t1 
approach into t naught when t one equal to one, then this we have the slope of the tangent line. So if this pattern continue, it look like it will go to sixty four uh, feet per second. If that pattern continue, so that's what we said. The second line approaches the tangent line, and the average velocity becomes the instantaneous velocity. So instantaneous velocity will be just at one point t equal to one. Right. Uh, the second is the old Greek word. Uh, second means uh, cut. Cut, of course, at two points. And the tangent is from a Greek letter, uh, mean touch. And when it touched at one point. Right. So the second line cuts the graph at two points. Uh, when we move the one point closer to the other, essentially it becomes the tangent line. The tangent line touched the graph at one point. And if this pattern continues, equal to that. Like I said, the idea here is not about the velocity or the slope. The idea here is what we want to study here is the limit. So, that example we have in the book. Now, if I want a better example, I would go with something like this to get the idea of limits. So, a uh, classic problem. So, uh, this problem is called the the Colby paradox or the Zeno paradox. Zeno paradox have a bunch of little paradox and this is one of them. So it says that uh, an object, when it go from one point to another, before it reach the final point, it will have to hit halfway. So let's say the arrow will travel the whole distance here. Before it reach the whole distance, it will have to have half of it, half of the distance. And then from that point on, it will have half of the remaining distance. And then half of the remaining distance. And then half of that. So the idea here is, it doesn't matter how close this point is to the final point. We can always get closer, right? Doesn't matter this point, how close it is to the final point. It can all Always get closer. It doesn't matter how small the distance is, we can always divide that by two. And Zeno argues that this process can continue. Essentially, the arrow cannot hit the target because it doesn't matter how close the arrow to the target is, it always get, can get closer. Doesn't matter how small the distance is, it can always be able to divide by two. So that's the idea. But of course, we know that is not true. If we shoot the arrow accurate enough, it will hit the target. Right. Except all, with all of that, now come the idea of limits. So the idea of limit is this. If we have an object approaching to the other, it doesn't matter whether the object actually hit the target or not. It is irrelevant in this case. Uh, once again, whether the arrow hit the target or not, is irrelevant. The idea of limit is if we can say the arrow can get as close as we want to the target, then we say the limit is the target. Whether it hit or not, it's not important. All right, I will write it out. So uh, right now we're not going to write everything in mathematical terms. We just write everything in kind of just an idea. So I would I will write uh, if uh, the arrow can get as close as the target as we want to. Then we say
the limit is the target. Regardless, whether the arrow hit the target or not. So that's the idea of limit. Is that no, no mathematical terms in this? I just get the idea. And then you say, let's say, if we have the arrow that uh, say at this point, of course it's not hit the target yet, but we still can get it closer. And that's the idea. If we can get as close as we want to, then we can say, the limit is the target. Whether the arrow actually hit it or not, it doesn't matter. If we get close enough, we can always get closer. Right? So, yeah. And the idea is, when it goes like this, it has to continue the process indefinitely. Of course, if we back in, we count, we know that if we just add this infinite series, If this goes on indefinitely, this will be equal to 1. So it travels the whole distance. But the idea is it has to go to infinity. So we have to. this process has to go indefinitely for it to be true. But in the idea uh, of limit, we're just going to say, if this one gets as close as we want to, then we say the limit is the target. Uh, in the next section, this will make uh, more and more sense when we actually have a few more examples in mathematical terms. But for now, that's all we have for the first section. Thank you for watching.